What's up guys, my name is Scott and you're watching Kentucky Ballistics. And today we're gonna to do a ballistic gel test with the 500 Automax. We have two 16 inch blocks of 10% ballistic gel made by Clear Ballistics. And we're gonna be using several different types of ammunition. And of course the firearm we're gonna be using today is the Bighorn Armory AR500 chambered in 500 Automax. The ammo we're using today was sent to us by Buffalo Bore and we have ammunition sent to us by Bighorn Armory. I just need you to take into consideration that all this ammunition is pre-production ammo. I'm going to answer a question real quick that's been asked a lot in the comments section and that is what is the difference between the 500 Auto Max and the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum? And really the only difference is the 500 Auto Max has a roomless case and this allows it to be ejected effectively out of an AR platform. And with a 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum, it's a handgun with a max barrel length of 10 inches and max capacity of 5 rounds. With something like the AR500, you have 10 round magazines, makes reloading a lot faster. You have a lot more rounds you can send down range a lot faster. You have an 18 inch barrel which provides more velocity and more accuracy. And you have a lot more options for optics. And on top of that, you have three points of contact on that rifle which allows you to be more accurate. So back to our ammo today, we're using some 275 grain Barnes hollow points, some Buffalo Bore 400 grain flat points, some 350 grain XTP hollow points, and some 500 grain flat points. I did chronograph this ammunition. I took three shots with each type of ammunition to get a quick average. For the Barnes 275 grain hollow points, we had an average of 2,345 feet per second. For the 350 grain XTP jacketed hollow points, we had an average of 2,186 feet per second. For the Buffalo Bore 400 grain flat points, we had an average of 1,923 feet per second. And for the 500 grain flat points, we had an average of 1,585 feet per second. I will leave all the chronograph readings in the description down below. Now let's get started. So we got our gel set up and we're gonna start out with the Barnes 275 grain XPBs. And we're about 10 yards away. Wow. Golly. So that round hit that gel with enough force to pull this nail out of the wood table. So here's your side view. We've got us a big wound channel there. Continued on, we've got pieces of the bullet breaking off in the gel. And then there's our bullet there in the second block. And our wound channel measures in at just about 21 inches and 3 fourths. I don't know if I'm going to have any gel left by the end of the day. <laughs> now let's use something a little heavier. These are some Buffalo Bore 400 grain flat points. Goodness! Man, that's putting out so much energy. Okay, again, the nail is pulled out of the table. So here's your look at the wound channel from above. And we just about made it through both blocks of ballistic gel. I thought that it went all the way through, but it looks like it shot out the side. And there's our bullet on the table. That is a big chunk of lead. So the bullet entered the second block and instead of it going out the back, the bullet kind of pulled left and ended up shooting out the side of the block. I think if the bullet wouldn't have deviated left, it would have went through all 32 inches of gel. But with it going out the side of the block, we have a measurement of just over 31 inches. Okay, I got two more rounds to shoot to this poor ballistic gel. We're gonna start out with a 500 grain flat point. I'm starting to get tired of hammering that nail back in. 
Okay, so we hit right here. And we have a nice wound channel going all the way through all 32 inches of gel. Then we smacked our foam books. And there's the bullet. That is also a huge chunk of lead. <laughs> okay, so I got one bullet left that we're going to shoot in the gel, and that's a 350 grain hollow point. I'm going to flip these blocks so we have some fresh gel for it to destroy. Okay, the last round we're going to hit this gel with is a 350 grain hollow point. <laughs> So I'm kind of confused at what happened because it's clear that we hit the gel. You can see that wound channel there, but our bullet's right there. The world. So that's all that's left of the 350 grain hollow point. So here's where we hit, and just look at that. Oh. Would you look at that? Yeah, that is a lot of damage to that gel. So the bullet exploded, <laughs> it kept going, went into the second block and then it looks like it went out the bottom of the block and I guess this block landed on the bullet and it was still hot and it just melted into the side of the gel and if I measure to where the bullet shot out the bottom of the gel we're around 21 and a half to 21 and 3 fourths so here's a look at the bullets this is what's left of the 275 grain barns this is the 350 grain XTP jacketed hollow point this is the buffalo bore 400 grain flat point. And this is the 500 grain flat point. The remaining weight of the 275 grain barns is 175.5 grains. The remaining weight of the 350 grain XTP jacketed hollow point is 211.3 grains. For the Buffalo Bore 400 grain flat point, we have a remaining weight of 392.7 grains. And last, the 500 grain flat point has a remaining weight of 485.8 grains. And now we'll take a few measurements. For the 275 grain barns, we have 0.807, 0.722, and 0.677. For the 350 grain XTP jacketed hollow point, we have 0 0.848, 0 0.718, and 0.798. For the Buffalo Bore 400 grain flat point, we have 0 0.932, 0 0.875, and 0 0.881. And last, the 500 grain flat point, we have 0 0.947, 0 0.820, and 0.852. Well, I'm surprised I have any gel left after today's video. That 500 Auto Max was tearing that gel up. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, be sure and give it a like and subscribe to the channel. If you're a new subscriber, make sure you hit that little bell at the top. It's going to give you notifications when we upload new videos. Be sure and check out Kentucky Ballistics Clothing, and check us out on Patreon, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Again, my name is Scott. You've been watching Kentucky Ballistics, and I'll see you next time.